Hello, Chargers fans. Welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. You saw the title of the video. You know what you're here for. Kaiser White is not coming back to the Chargers. I've discussed this. We've discussed this on this channel over and over again. And despite the fact that many people didn't think that was a smart move, and I don't think it's a smart move, we all at some point expected it to happen. And the more evidence that came out, the more we realized that, yeah, this definitely isn't happening. So I'm just going to quickly recap the the video that I did about why Kaiser White will not return to the Chargers. Uh, this is just a you know re, me reposting the the video that I made. So Tom Telesco obviously cycles through his linebackers. He does not you know hold on to linebackers for very long. He rarely retains his day two and day three draft picks. That's no different this year, right? Justin Jones, Etienne Wosu, Kaiser White, Scott Questenberry, all those guys are gone. And you know Telesco has been, I guess, sort of to his credit. Preparing for this with drafting Drew Tranquil, drafting Kenneth Murray, eh, drafting Nick Neiman, signing Amen Ogbong Bamiga, who we're going to talk about in a bit. So in some ways, there was preparation for this. The Fangio tree and the defense, do they, they just don't prioritize inside linebackers, and they certainly don't prioritize paying those guys. So yes, that was you know part of the evidence, of course. We saw that Week 18 game against the Raiders, and we knew that he was there was just something off there with Kaiser White and that whole situation where you know we just kind of figured okay maybe they are going with kenneth murray and obviously they did then back in january i reached out to someone they said that it's a reach that kaiser white returns citing kenneth murray's first round status and the money of course involved uh, both with already investing in kenneth murray and then having to pay kaiser white i reached out again i believe at the beginning of march and yeah sorry march 12th i wrote here um the source basically said that white and jones were not going to return I would have guessed that one of those two, or really one of the three, was were going to return, but they did not, obviously. Uh, that time they cited that Week 18 game, which we've talked about, and the common theme of not keeping guys, and specifically citing Eric Weddle. And then finally, you know, I had a conversation with him. Basically, he was not going to return. It was, you know, there was interest, but it didn't seem like it was going to happen. And clearly there was not enough interest or no offer because obviously Kaiser White is gone. Kaiser White has signing with the Eagles on a one year up to $5 million deal. I definitely did not expect this to be happening for Kaiser White. I would have expected that he, especially after the two linebackers, Campbell and Olukun, if I'm not mistaken, they got uh, $10 million a year and $15 million a year. So while I understand why Kaiser White could come in lower than that, I think we expected maybe eight to 10 seven million dollars over two years or whatever one year up to five million dollars so it could be really a one year three and a half million dollar deal i did not expect that i and we all understood that the chargers would likely not pay kaiser white or pay inside linebackers the money that maybe they deserve but i didn't think it would go this low um you know and uh, michael peterson from bulls in the blue responded to the news of the deal and said, after all the smart moves this offseason, they're essentially throwing in the towel at linebacker. Wouldn't be surprised to see them select one in the first this year. So that does bring up an interesting point. Do the Chargers address linebacker in the draft or free agency? And specifically, do they address it in the first round? To me, I think that's no. I, I highly doubt if Staley doesn't prioritize linebacker or in terms of giving resources to inside linebackers in his defense, then I don't think they would take a linebacker in the first round. Uh, clearly, with the departure of Kaiser White, they're not going to prioritize linebacker that much. I, I think Telesco will do the same thing he's always done. I think Staley will do the same thing that Telesco has done, which he, they've kind of done in his tenure with the Rams or with the Broncos. Go after guys on day three or inexpensive options uh, and to fill that linebacker void. I do think they will take a linebacker. They have 10 picks. The odds of them taking a linebacker are pretty high especially with you know two second-year players who barely saw the field behind Kenneth Murray and an injured, an oft-injured starter in, in Drew Tranquil. So I think they could definitely address a linebacker. But in the first round, I don't buy it. With that said, I think that is a sneaky option we need to keep an eye on and keep track of because there's a chance that when the Chargers pick, Devin Lloyd or Nakobe Dean are the best players on their board. It's just not a position they prioritize. But if you're telling me, you know, Devin Lloyd and the Kobe Dean over Bernard Raymond <laughs> or now nah, I wouldn't say Christian Watson, but if you're telling me, you know, reach for a tackle or you know, reach for an edge rusher, 
or just take one of the two best linebackers in this draft, I could understand why they go inside linebacker, but I still don't buy it. And specifically because of Amen Ogbong Bamiga, I don't think he is going to be starting immediately, although it wouldn't surprise me. I just don't think it's going to happen. So I'll link this in the description. I wrote an article and I posted it on Twitter. I just sometimes write on our blog for fun. We do have a blog. I just never really write on it because I'm so busy elsewhere. But Amen Ogbong Bamiga, he was the reason I wrote this article. The article is three Chargers players generating buzz this offseason. I could not stop hearing his name this offseason. For whatever reason, unprompted, several people, three current or former teammates, which I have in bold here, unprompted, three former or current teammates, unprompted, have brought his name up one of them predicting that he'd be a household name in this league i will just share with you one of those people is kaiser white who believes very very strongly in one amen ogbong bamiga and i didn't think that based on the way the draft went right so you have and it's funny because we always talk about telesco prioritizing you know his draft picks over other guys i would have assumed that based on nick neiman's ras score the fact that they drafted him fact that Eamon Ogba Mamigo was an undrafted free agent and the fact that Neiman just basically was the best player on the Chargers uh, the entire preseason in my opinion I thought Neiman was going to get that start but when Murray went down in the scrimmage uh, in that in that uh, scrimmage at SoFi that the Chargers held Eamon Ogba Mamigo was the first guy in not Neiman Neiman rotated later with Cole Christiansen and then again during the season I thought Neiman would go in and Neiman was in there occasionally but he was their special teams ace Ogbong Bamiga was the starting linebacker when some guys got hurt. So I thought that was really interesting. Daniel Popper had an interview with Steven, and he said that, you know, the team really believes in Ogbong Bamiga. So again, another person. So I've had three current or former teammates unprompted bring up his name. And then Daniel Popper as well, confirming the team believes in Ogbong Bamiga. And, and honestly, I'm not saying I, I don't see it, but I'm surprised because of how little he's played and the fact that he's an undrafted free agent, that would be a big, big jump for him. And again, I am still surprised that they feel that way over Neiman, who, no offense to Ogbong Vamiga, but Neiman has you know, a 9.9 RAS score, Ogbong Vamiga a 5.11. Not that that's the only thing that matters, but that's a pretty significant difference. Neiman was the player they drafted. He contributes more on special teams, but they want Ogbong Vamiga out there as a starting linebacker, or they want to get him to that point. So... What does that mean? What I'm trying to say is I don't think they're going to take a linebacker in the draft for a good while. If they do, it's just because they had four seventh round picks and they had to go somewhere. But I think they're set overall with their core four. Murray's obviously not going anywhere. If anyone's going to be replaced, it's Drew Tranquil. And they may want to just relegate him to a special teams backup rotation, you know, blitz type of role, maybe. Um, because uh, Tranquil's contract is up pretty soon, so they might want to get ahead of that. And you know, it's possible, but I think they feel really good about Neiman. Obviously, as a you know, I think he won Pro Football Writers Association, you know, all rookie special teamer or whatever. <laughs> and you know, he was fourth in the league, I think, in, in special team tackles. So there's something there, but they just really believe in Neiman Ogbong Ramiga. So I think they're done in the draft. Or, uh, sorry, I think they're done in free agency. I think they're overall done in the in the draft until late 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 day three but you know again it wouldn't surprise me to see them go with the Kobe Dean at 17 knowing the connections to Georgia the fact that there is sort of a need now uh, but we'll see so what do you guys think about this move I know most of you were not a fan of this so hopefully this doesn't upset you guys too much but you know we it, it, it's I, I posted on Twitter it's it's the I told you so that I didn't want to happen like this was Basically, from the moment, you know, the day after the Raiders game, we sat there in, in at the win and talked about on our show, what does this mean for Kaiser White? And since that day, you know, we've basically been following the breadcrumbs and the trail to this happening. And and again, 99% of me knew that this was going to happen, but the 1% was just like, there's no way. There's no way they could do this, but they did. So Kaiser White is gone. I do want to talk about just the general philosophy of the team at, at a later episode, I think compiling a lot of things that are discussed maybe behind the scenes. So um, I'll get to that. But for now, Kaiser White is gone. I just want to make a quick video to uh, you know announce and, and recap him being gone. And the reasons that he's gone, I am, I wish him all the best. 
I guess he was born or raised or grew up in Philadelphia or in Pennsylvania. So I think great. Him going to the Eagles is awesome. I hope he crushes it. I hope he plays behind that fantastic defensive line and gets himself a big contract the following year. But um, not with the Chargers, unfortunately. I guess he's not going to be back. So that's it for me today, guys. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, bolt up. Thank you.